Coach, thank you very much for your time. Um, it's, it's a pleasure to be here and also it's been hectic weeks for you, um, for your team and everything. You've been on this job for some time now. What has coaching Nigeria's senior national team, especially for you as a former player, what does it mean to you? Because um, coaching the Super Eagles is, is no mean feat. I would say thanks for having me, first of all. Um, yes, uh, it means a lot to me to be a coach of the Nigerian national team, Super Eagles. Uh, the same way to me, it means a lot to a lot of coaches also because when the opportunity comes for you to coach the Nigerian national team, you should grab it and try to like, do whatever you can do to make sure you um, come up with um, positive results because it's the only result that actually keeps in the job. Uh, it's, it's a joyful thing to be a joyful thing to anybody to coach Nigeria. Although it's a tough one, but I think it's, um, it's a good job and any coach who wants to coach Nigeria. And um, so far, it's, it's, it's working perfectly. You, you had an amazing um, campaign at the Africa Cup of Nations, mm. maybe not the ending that you, you wanted, wanted. but um, what, what are the positives that you pick from that Nations Cup campaign in Cameroon? Uh, you know, the young, I have to also give a lot of credit to the former coach. He's actually the one who assembled this team, you know, grinding results here and there, a couple of years. And then the last few months before his exit, wasn't to only God knows why. It was the same thing, the same style of football, but all of a sudden we struggled a little bit. And that's why I still have to give him credit because he was the one who put this team together. And if you look at it since when I came in, even up till now, they have not really the chance to see how to draft new players in or to play. That window I've not been there to play friendly games to see if you can actually um, uh, change the style of play or personnel, so that chance has not been there. That's why I still give a lot of credit to him. You know, yes, the outcome is not the exit we wanted. We, we did quite well. People are singing our praises. And the positives we took out of that is that there is, there is, there is hope in this team. And then the way we wanted it to play, they are smart enough to quickly adapt with what the style of play the technical crew wanted. So, but the fact that they, they know our philosophy and the way we want to operate, so which means um, we have um, a brighter chance in the future. Right, and um, your, your loss against um, Tunisia, how, how did you take it? I, I felt, was at the stadium. Felt, oh, really? It felt really bad. felt really bad like every other person who supports Nigeria. And, um, <clears throat> you know, playing against North African teams, they are very smart. We all know that, technically, tactically very good. And on that day, yes, I don't want to talk about the red card thing. You know, even when we went short, the player shot 10 against 11, we still tried to do, change the style of play system. And then we, was, we pushed them to the back, you know, we pushed them back. But at the end of the day, that was a mistake. Mistake, one, one error, and then we're punished for it, but we just couldn't come back. Towards the end, we had a chance to probably equalize and, and drag the game to extra time, you know, or have opportunity to win the game, but it just didn't happen for us. So, um, it's not the exit we wanted, but it happened. So, we took some positives out of it. Here we are. And I'm um, looking at the bigger picture. What, what is your vision for this um, Super Eagles team, given how young the team um, is and the array of stars that you have, like you've mentioned. What, yeah. what is your vision for the Super Eagles? Yeah, it's, it's, not, um, it's not a sprint. Uh, it's a marathon. We keep our eyes on the big, big, big trophy up there. It could be the African continent, it could be the world. And it's just a slow build up. Even when I'm not here tomorrow, I want to try to assemble the team that we were able to compete anywhere, anytime, for a very long time. So we started it now. When the time comes for us to have opportunity to play friendly games, so we can always add to the team positively, we'll do that. It's a long-term one, it's a long-term one, but at the end of the day, um, when I leave here, or when this crew leaves, we want to have a standing team that will have command and control African football, if not the entire world for a very long period. And um, you mentioned about you having a long-term plan. 
so many players, uncountable, who are even playing their trade in top leagues, mm. who are still eligible to play for the Super Eagles. Um, I'm sure that you as a coach, sometimes it gives you sleepless nights because I saw you going around talking to your players, um, taking a look at how they are doing, and you still haven't even scratched the, the <laughs> others who are still eligible for the Super Eagles. Yeah. How does it give you sleepless nights with all these players that you have? It does sometimes, but at the end of the day, decisions have to be made. And the good thing is, it's not so easy if I tell you, listen, you're going to be in the team, and then at the end of the day, you're not in the team for whatever reasons. I want that relationship to continue. I, I like friendship. I like relationship. But it's up to you now to say, listen, I'm not going to continue that relationship because I've not had my chance to play. And mind you, playing for any national team in this world, especially our national team, the Super Eagles, is not a right. It's a privilege. It's like the coaching crew as well. It's not my right to coach Nigeria. It's also a privilege. So when the opportunity comes, try to do whatever you can do and leave a positive note. So when you leave, there will always be a point of reference. Yes, it's a tough one, but to select 23 out of millions of players, it's not so easy. But I reach out to them every now and then and just pacify them, your chance will come. If it doesn't come, it's not my fault, but I will try to see how I can give opportunity to as many as I can, when the opportunity is there, when the time is right. Nobody's forgotten, but we're waiting for the appropriate time. They'll be given a fair try, a fair chance. If a governor is selecting players for the Super Eagles, what are the criteria that you look out for in selecting players for the national team for any form of assignment? Yeah, now you mention an assignment. It could be friendly game, it could be competitions, it can be knockout, whatever. And uh, first thing we look at is um, we want to look at current form, number of games you've played for your team, and um, your style of football, if it suits what we want, me and my crew, because we always discuss, and every game comes differently. Every opposition has different style of game. So we want to look at the present form, if the, 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 um, the style we want to play, if you fit into that style. Then we'll look at it. And then injury worries also. You know, that's why we look at present form, how many games you've played in the past few weeks. But sometimes it becomes a little bit difficult. And that forms our decision. Do you sometimes get backlash from not maybe including so many local players yes, in your squad? I get a lot. I get a lot. And because <clears throat> when I played for Nigeria, I just left Nigeria shores to Europe in the first year. And prior to that, I was invited to camp. And basically, we were the homeboys that were playing. They know how, how, how much I like, you know, the player playing in the league. But that, the difference is, over there, we're more, they are more organized in, the, in, the, in, the, in terms of football, training, facilities, and all that. So we are less organized, let me put it that way, you know. But however, you cannot compare here and there because it's just in terms of organization. But talent-wise, we do. Yes, I get those backlash, and it, it doesn't really matter to me. But I want to remain focused. I have, I, have, I have them at heart, but the slightest opportunity I have, I'll give them a chance. Definitely. And um, you, you also mentioned style of play. I want to know the Aguavon style of play. You know, you know Guardiola? Yes, I like his style of football. I do. It's a bit risky. It keeps you on the edge, but I like it. But it's a mixture. You have to mix it up. Talk to us about that. You have to mix it up. No, we have to mix it up. When <laughs> so it, so it depends how, how do you mix on, it up? No, no, it depends on the reaction of, uh, of your position. Okay. Yes, that way then information goes to our people. And um, how, how, how do you communicate these to your players? Because sometimes, like you're saying... You no, we train it. We train okay. before the game. We train two, three, four different systems. And then we'll get information on how opponents react. And then before the game, we talk to our people. And during the game, we also send messages to them as well. Uh, right. You've, you've spoken a lot about the uh, Eagles and the reason why you are busy, everyone is also busy, reason why we are here, um, World Cup qualifiers, you've seen the 10 teams that are um, gunning for just five slots, yes. which I think sometimes is a bit unfair. 
um, to see that <laughs> Super Eagles or Ghana not going yeah, to the no. World Cup or Egypt um, or, um, or um, Senegal, Nigeria, Cameroon, Cameroon mm. big matches on the continent this week. It's going to be hectic on Friday and also on Tuesday as well. Um, you are leading this team. How is the mindset for this big game? You see, Ghana is a team that we have always respected. I personally have always respected. Uh, forget about performance in the Nations Cup, Ghana's performance or Nigeria's performance. Nigeria, Ghana, any day, in any categories is always a big one. Huh? We are rivals, we respect them, we adore them. I'm very sure they respect us and they adore us as well. We are brothers and sisters. Uh, like you said, it's, it's, um, it's going to be a clash. It's going to be, uh, you know, it's going to be very tough, but in a friendly manner. It is not do the affair because uh, after the game, they will, Ghana and Nigeria will still exist, will still be friends. But we are going to remain focused and try as much as possible to play our game and come up with a positive result. Everything looked very calm and you've mentioned that it's going to be a big clash. Yeah. It is a big one, but it's a normal match. It's a normal match, yes. What does it mean to you and the people of Nigeria how huge is this for you personally, for the team and the people of Nigeria? You know, in football today, Nigeria is it's a big football nation. And as a big football nation, it's like Brazil, Argentina in South America, or England, Holland, Spain, Germany in, in Europe. And it's a global tournament coming up right in front of us. And for you not to be part of it, it's, we will say it's it's not good enough, it's on head of. So it's a big one. Eh? We want to try to do everything we can, remain focused, train well, play our opponent with everything that we can, but with a lot of respect, and just see how we can uh, you know, get over the line. It's a big one, it's a big one. Uh, it's, we cannot, no, we have to go to Accra or Kumasi and, and do something. Nigeria has been at the World Cup six times. Um, the only country to have done better is also um, Cameroon, a team that beat or that you beat the last time that um, you mm. got to the World Cup. What has Nigeria done right? Or what has the Super Eagles done right in that regard? And why has the country been so good when it comes to games of this nature? No, because we've got the talent. We know what we want. We are focused on the end the end in mind, which in this case is the World Cup. So we've got the talent, that's why I say we talk administratively, we've got all the backings, you know, right from the federal government, from the ministry, you know, Minister of Sports is always there for us as well. So administratively we're ready. And talent-wise we have it. So we have everything to our disposal. And then it's a global tournament, it's a tough one, and I don't think any big nation like Nigeria will want to miss out. Talking about talent, you have array of them in your team. Some are injured though, but you quickly drafted in some. You clearly see that it's not a team that lacks talent. In your opinion, um, wh what is the, the, the score that you have? Who is your biggest asset in this current team? The young and vibrant, quick, react well, listens, and um, tactically, when you tell them, give information, they carry it out. When you switch and tell them to switch, they remember things. It's a collective effort, both from the staff down there to up there. So everybody has something to say, but you pass information to me and I, and I take it out there. So it's a collective um, work from everybody. How because yeah. um, if one person scores, the team wins. So we're not going to say individual win the game, but we say collectively we won. 100% downward how well do you trust your players to maybe initiate your um, instructions or the trust that you have in them if i'm to rate it 100 percent <laughs> 100 percent yes you see we have that relationship uh, open up feel very free to tell me how you feel what you think and then i will sit down and think over it sleep over it if you're making sense to me I will adopt it. If you're not, I will not tell you why I don't want to adopt it. And 
for us to have that relationship and open interaction, it can be in the open, it can be one on one, but I trust them 100%. I'm very sure they also trust me. What, what do you make of the Ghana national team, the Black Stars? What do you make of them? It's a good team. It's a very good team, no doubt about that. I don't know much about them when I talk about knowing much about them, not as players now or as a team. I'm talking about administratively. That's all I can say. It's a team that I respect. They are big players playing big clubs as well. And it's a good team. They are going to miss their services of um, their captain, Andre Ayu, in both um, legs. Um, mm. Does that give you some sort of um, relief? Yeah, it's quite unfortunate. The young man will be missing in both games. And um, I think I'm very sure he's the kind of game he wants to play as well, being the captain as well. And, but it is what it is. You know, he will be also not coming. He's a player we are also going to miss a lot. But that is not the focus right now. The focus is play with people that we have and, and just work hard and then try to win the game. Because uh, it will be still part of force, it remains part of force. It's going to be there with us in spirit, not physically, but... Of course, let's talk about something interesting. You released your squad um, about four weeks ago or three weeks ago, if, <laughs> if I'm correct. And then I had to go through, now you know wh what that means, like you have um, the journalist going through, okay, who is this player, who is that player and everything. But as a coach of the Super Eagles and you're going to play a team like that, what, what do you make of that, that late um, announcement of the squad and um, is that sort of put pressure on the Eagles or <coughs> you're trying to figure out because how do you plan? So the one, the one we're saying in the internet is not correct, huh? <laughs> is that what you're saying? It doesn't really bother us. You know, um, Ghana is Ghana. Ghanaian player is Ghanaian player. There's not too much of a difference. Uh, maybe slight difference in individual performance and all that. So they're holding their squad to their chest. That's their decision. And we, were, we wanted to let the world know how we want to operate so that the boys will start thinking and preparing psychologically also. Uh, so because if I tell you, players are different. If I tell you only five days to the game that you will be in the squad, then it might, it might hit you. So if I tell you early enough, like I said, players are different, then you start psychologically, you start preparing your mind, start preparing yourself. So Ghana decides to release their team two weeks ago, yesterday, or maybe tomorrow. That's their choice, that's the way they want to go about it. So it really doesn't bother us. Do you think it's some sort of mind games, maybe? I don't know. You know, it's, it's I don't Ghana, know. Nigeria. Whatever it is, whatever it is, we want to focus on our own training and our okay. game plan. My, my final two questions to you is about Africa's qualification system mm. um, to the World Cup and how it pits the best against each other. Like we mentioned a while ago, big teams, big um, football nations coming up against um, each other. What do you make of the current form and do you think the continent deserves more slots? I should think so. I should think so because I think performance also matters. And after this five, we'll go to the World Cup and and then we're part of it and we do well at the World Cup, we can always argue for more slots. Yeah, I think we deserve more. So you, for you, you feel that the Africans or the African teams that get the opportunity to go to the World Cup should put up a performance that can merit us more slots? Look at the CAF Champions League and, uh, you know, when, when, when um, a team that representing their own country doesn't do well, the slots goes down a little bit. Like the Champions League and some of these small European countries, when a team is doing well consistently in the Champions League or Europa Cup, it gives an opportunity for them to add one. But if, there isn't, if they are not doing well, then it's a start going down. So performance in the, in the next uh, World Cup in Qatar will be, give us a big opportunity to argue for more slots. We had a late venue change. Mm. Um, at the, for the Barbera Sports Stadium. So from Cape Coast to the Barbera Sports Stadium. Um, how do you welcome this news? It's okay, we have no choice. We have to go and then just go and play and put a good performance and come up with a positive result. I'm asking you this because the last time you were um, the coach that led the Dream Team um, to the same venue, 
and had a 3-1 advantage um, over 10, that is the, in the Olympics um, qualifiers some 11 years ago. Yeah. Does it evoke memories going back to the Babaya Sports Stadium? <laughs> you see, when we beat Ghana in Benin, three goals to one, we had the likes of Nusai Gibo, um, Udo Amadi, Kingsley, Udo, the captain. Um, we had our players intact. Ahmed Musa was also there, Odin Galo, all of that were in there. And then it was just the time of which players to sign a new contract. And then eight or nine of those players, the, even the captain, Haruna, Lukman Haruma, they all went back to Europe to try to like change clubs or sign new contracts. So we went there with only three players or four players that played in Benin. So it was, we had to now get players from here and there, and then Ghana struggled. But this time around, we have a full team, and the result will be different. Talking about full team, your strikers are blazing. That's what I'm saying. Victor Simon. That's exactly what I'm also, saying. So uh, we went Igalo. there with a depleted team then, and Ghana still struggled. So just let's wait and see what happens on Friday. What do you make of your strikers? Victor Simon seems to have, he's, he's in good form. Igalo as well. What do you make of them coming into this? Um, you, you, you called up nine strikers. Yes, because we like to play attacking football. All nine are not going to play at the same time anyway. Yeah. And you see, when you talk about nine strikers, not actually it's not nine strikers because you're putting them together. Because then guess, you, yeah. if you have nine strikers, you don't have a balance in your team. So most of these players are side midfielders who goes up there. So the actual strikers we have there is Igalo, Sadiq, um, Usime and, and, and Ugalu, Sadiq, Usime, Yenacho comes from behind a little bit. So the other ones are side players. So if you have nine out of nine strikers, you don't have a balance. Do you? <laughs> Not Outside, at all. No. <laughs> you know, so the good thing is they are all injury free. We pray they stay like that and they are in good form. And um, it's an added advantage. So it's uh, the adding value to the team, which is quite good. If there's one thing that you tell your players and you tell the country before you take on the Black Stars of Ghana, what will that be? We play Ghana with everything, uh -huh. home and away, but we respect them because it's a good football nation. With no disrespect, but we'll fight and make sure we come up. They will come up victorious. But the only thing about the fans back home, they are, they are, they are football lovers, they support the Eagles a lot. And we just we pray and hope and um, still tell them to keep supporting the team because there's nothing as good as when you have support behind you, especially coming from the fans and the entire country, it gives you that energy to move on. Coach, so um, this is going to be aired in Ghana. <laughs> <laughs> I want you to talk to your Nigerian fans in Ghana. I'm sure that um, they were asking for more tickets to go to the stadium to... Give them. What? <laughs> If you do have, give them, please. The one, the, the one to out, outshine the Ghanaian fans then, they're like, no way. What do you, what do you um, have to tell them? I want to appreciate them because we've been hearing news every now and then, how they can't wait for us to arrive. They're there wearing for their country for the fact that they are in Ghana. does not mean that they're, they're not in support of Nigeria. So we want to appreciate them and we're coming in there. And together we're into this fight together. We will... We will not um, disappoint them. We'll come with high hopes and then the light will keep burning. A score line already? No, I can't predict the score line, <laughs> but we'll come up with a good result. Coach, thank you very much My for pleasure. your time. I wish you all the best. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.